Um, welcome to Frank Herd Auto. This is our uh, second attempt at ex trying to explain how a manual transmission uh, works. Uh, I'm going to begin with uh, apologies. I don't have a flywheel handy right now, so I'm going to pretend this is the pr uh, flywheel. So what happens is the flywheel is attached to the crankshaft. So anytime the crankshaft is spinning, the flywheel spins with it. Okay. So that's one part. Second is when the, there is a, something called a pressure plate, which is right here. The pressure plate is attached through the bolts, with the bolts right here. It's attached to the flywheel. So anytime the flywheel is spinning, the pressure plate spins with it. Okay. The third thing that happens here is there is a clutch plate. This is a clutch plate right here. The clutch plate goes in between the flywheel and the pressure plate. And any time, so this is how it spins. And the clutch plate is splined through right here. It's splined onto the input shaft of the transmission. So any time the clutch plate is spinning, any time the clutch plate is spinning, the input shaft of the transmission spins with it. Okay. So as long as this clutch plate is squeezed between the, the pressure plate and the flywheel, it spins with it. Uh, it spins at the same speed the crankshaft is spinning. Okay. Now, how does the clutch work? When a person steps on the, cl uh, the clutch pedal, this fork right here, it pushes on the clutch bearing, it pushes it outwards. As the bearing gets pushed outwards, the bearing presses against the fingers on the pressure plate right here. So it presses against that. I'm not strong enough to push this down with my bare hands, but when you can, when you push these forks down, this part of the, uh, the pressure plate moves back. And when this moves back, the clutch plate right here is no longer squeezed between the flywheel and the pressure plate. Hence, this will stop spinning and it will stop uh, the input shaft from spinning. Now that I was, uh, I hope I was able to explain how the power comes to um, the input shaft uh, through the clutch. So I'm going to go over some parts now. That was one of the complaints from last video that uh, the parts weren't mentioned. So we have the input shaft. This is where the power comes in from uh, the engine crankshaft through uh, the pressure plate and the clutch plate. So we have input shaft. The power comes in through here. And then we have our counter shaft, which goes right here. Okay. And then we have our output shaft. The output shaft is what takes the power back to, depending on what the setup is, uh, the differential or um, transaxle, depending on how it is. So that's what takes the power to the wheels. This gear that you see at the back here, this gear is called a reverse idler gear. So when you put uh, the car in reverse, that is the gear uh, that will make, uh, will change the direction of the input shaft from the output shaft. So it's that gear. It's called reverse idler gear. Once again, I apologize for missing majority of the, some parts on this transmission, but I'll do my best to explain how this works. So what happens is there's a, there would be a dome shape here, which we're missing on this transmission. Obviously, we're missing that. And you have, I'm going to pretend the screwdriver is the gear shift lever. So what you would have is the dome here, which would allow it to pivot right in the middle. Pivot meaning it will allow it to go side to side and back and forth. So what happens is when you go into one gear from one gear to another gear, uh, most of the time if the driver is sitting on the left side of the transmission, you would put uh, this, for, uh, this uh, shift lever would be allowed to move back and forth between the shift forks. So you got three forks here. This will, once you move it back and forth, this will move the fifth gear and the reverse gear. This will do the third gear and the fourth gear. This will do first gear and the second gear. And they just move back and forth on the shift rods right here. Okay, so this is not a rod. I know it's a file, but I don't have one right now. But all this will do is 
keep it in line so it doesn't fall apart, so it just moves back and forth. So what happens is, if the driver is sitting on the left side, you would pull the shift lever to your left and you would go backwards, okay? Which, well, the fork will attach here and it will push this back, moving the, the synchro collar, which is right here. This synchro collar is for first and second gear and reverse gear. There's a second synchro collar, which is right here. This will do the third and the fourth gear, and then you have the one for the fifth gear right here, okay? So when you go, this would be going this way, pushing back, you got first gear, pushing this way. When this moves, uh, when the, uh, the fork, the shift fork moves forward, it will be in second gear, it would come to neutral, it would go into the shift fork right here, you go forward, pushing this synchro collar backwards, going into third gear. From here, when you pull the lever backwards because it's pivoting here, it will push the synchro collar onto the fourth gear. And then last thing, you would go into the third shift fork. And if you go forward, pushing this back, it will move the fifth gear collar, engaging the fifth gear. And when you go to the right and backwards, it will engage the reverse gear. I am going to remove um, the shift forks just so I can show you the uh, inside of the transmission because there are a lot of parts that are still hidden here. So I'm going to remove the shift forks. Okay. And now we see the collars. We have the synchro collars right here and here, and there's one right here. So the function of the synchro collar, there are a couple of functions of it. One is when we're shifting gears, they prevent the, the synchro collars, they prevent the clashing of the gears when we're engaging. So basically it prevents the grinding. That was, that's the first function. And the second function of the synchros is to lock the output gears. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth. So to lock the output shaft gears to the output shaft. 